Hello, brothers and sisters. Thank you for this awesome opportunity to share God's Word and to uh, grow in God and grow in, in love and joy and peace and the many other attributes that we look for all year long and especially in the Advent season. This, uh, this particular uh, week is Advent week number three and the theme traditionally has been love. And uh, that's certainly a, a great topic and a, a needed area in our time to ourselves grow in love, to inspire love in others, um, in the families, love among our co-workers in our neighborhoods, in our, among our relatives, you know, beyond our immediate family, all the different, and certainly our country could use um, a substantial dose of love as we uh, get past a lot of the stresses, acrimony, uh, disappointments of um, of these uh, last few months with COVID, with election, with uh, unemployment uh, way up, uh, the economy turned upside down. It's a, a time, a great time to need love, a great time to give love. And the uh, text that we have uh, for today is Ephesians chapter 3, and focusing on 14 through 21. I encourage you to uh, read that and reread that. It's one of the most amazing Bible passages in terms of uh, building up an understanding of love, uh, an understanding of what's beyond understanding. And uh, we're going to at least uh, delve uh, together into this amazing text uh, for a few minutes. So um, the, the text uh, references God as the father and the father of all uh, human families. There's this wonderful reference. Uh, we bow our knees before the father from whom every family on earth derives its name. And, and I think that the concept of name here is, is this uh, a deep sense of name, identity, and our, our true identity is found in, uh, in the Father, in, in looking to God above, God who is our, our creator, our guide, the master of all the universes, and master of your life, my life, uh, which uh, uh, allows us to call him Father, the ultimate Father. Well, however, however thriving and uh, beautiful and um, exemplary your family is, or if it uh, has, has some dysfunction, uh, we also have the bigger family where God our Father pulls us together. We, we pray our Father just the, the, the thought of it, that we, by praying the Lord's Prayer together, we are affirming a bigger family, and all of us derive our ultimate name as children of God, as uh, uh, people that look to the uh, ultimate Father. Uh, another thought, too, that Paul might have here is a play on words. Uh, Pater is a, a name for father, Patria is a, a name for family, so that the uh, the language itself, in some languages, lends itself to this. We, we sometimes we talk about our fatherland uh, as as a reference to our country, or maybe a country that um, you were born in outside the United States. So the, the fatherhood concept is very deep and important. And, and not to be a sexist about this, but that's the way our, our language helps embody it for good reason. Uh, we need to look to a father, we need to look to a mother in uh, our growing up and even as, uh, as we mature as adults. So what I'd like to focus on are three aspects of this text and three aspects of, of growing into love. And, and those are to to cultivate longing, to cultivate 
uh, looking and to cultivate loving. Now, if we said, well, where is the Holy Family now? Uh, that's our, our title for our, uh, our meditation today. Where is the Holy Family now? Uh, we could reimagine ourselves back 2,000 years, um, hearing about Jesus' birth. Maybe uh, maybe uh, you were working in Herod's uh, uh, throne room or somewhere else in the, the great palace and uh, overheard these magi uh, from the east uh, talking about the uh, birth of a new king. And, um, you know, you can't just run out and, and, and look yourself. But, hey, it, it sticks in your mind and and uh, that these uh, religious leaders said uh, that the prophet said he would be born in Bethlehem. So um, when you're you know done with work, you might yourself head over to Bethlehem, not that far away, uh, just a few miles away, and, um, and see if you could find the Holy Family, see if you could find this amazing uh, baby that's already called King born king because you know someone's born in a royal family they're born as a princess or a prince to be born king is a unique event that happened only once in in all of human history and that is when jesus christ was born but someone's born king of the jews so you could uh, imagine going up and down the streets in uh, Bethlehem just looking for a clue of some sort, some kind of a indicator that 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 you're at the spot. You could knock on the door, uh, take a good look, maybe worship, as the as the Magi said they were going to do, to worship the newborn king, because they saw him as much more than than human king. They had read the prophets; uh, they were aware, because you know in the east. The, uh, some of the Jewish prophets actually wrote further east. Um, you know, think of Daniel, Ezekiel, uh, and and some of the others were were actually writing in captivity, and the Jewish writings had already become a, a worldwide sensation. When it was translated, they were translated into Greek. The whole Old Testament, the whole Hebrew Scriptures. So at any rate, whatever their background was, and whatever the Holy Spirit had guided them to do, they were there to, to worship the newborn king. But if you're looking, what do you look for? Uh, a lot of commotion? Mm -hmm. Well, what if it's a secret where he is? Uh, you, you look for some kind of a you know, big palace, a really nicest home in town. Maybe that's where Jesus would be born. Uh, no, not there. You knock on the door. Look look at the next four or five, you know, homes in terms of niceness, uh, luxury, uh, uh, expensiveness in terms of their uh, style of home. And you know, you know, you'd be disappointed. It would not not happen. And can you imagine not, you know, not uh, even thinking about this family that you see in, in a stable, in a stable, like a homeless family, just uh, allowed to uh, to have have their uh, shelter in in an animal stable among the donkeys and and, and sheep and what other other animals and and, and here's a, a baby in a feed trough that you would just turn away. You could you just it was so it would be so pathetic to see a family reduced to such poverty. And it doesn't even occur to you that that might be the family. You see how easy it is to miss Christmas in terms of the real sense of Christmas? Think about how easy it is to miss the real sense of Christmas in our own time. Also. So, looking at these three points, look to look. Um... What, what does it mean to look for Jesus? What does it mean to, to look for God in, in our lives? <clears throat> now, the prophets express their uh, longing for uh, the Messiah. And I'm thinking especially about the Old Testament prophets, the Hebrew prophets. Tremendous detail, uh, uh, a lot of paradox that this is a baby 
who is mighty God and everlasting Father. Uh, in Isaiah uh, 9, 6, uh, you, you think of uh, Isaiah talking about the ultimate servant of God, this Holy One uh, who, who would uh, die for our sins in uh, Isaiah 53. And you know, amazing, amazing statements. And, and I do honor also the prophets outside of Scripture, the prophets outside of the, uh, the Jewish canon, the Jewish uh, literature, uh, such as Lao Tzu, talking about uh, the Holy One that, that we need and, and who will come and who will fulfill uh, the Tao, the, the way of heaven. Uh, to to uh, uh, exemplify uh, what what a full humanity means, what full spiritual health and and wholeness uh, means in 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 his life, and and through his death will pay for our sins. This is this is what Lao Tzu said uh, back um, six hundred B.C. six hundred B.C perhaps drawing from ideas he had read in Isaiah, you know, because in the Silk Road there was certainly a lot of traffic, or perhaps the Holy Spirit had guided him too. We're not suggesting add loud to, to the Old Testament, but he's rich with awareness of the need for the Holy One to come to, to help us, and some of the details that were fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Or even uh, Socrates, uh, what we need is the ultimate politician he said not not king of the jews he didn't didn't you know wasn't into the language of the magi or the, the language of the old testament but yet what we need is this ultimate politician from heaven who would embody who would have the power to to teach to get attention because he's a politician he has his leverage his power but, but to teach us what justice is, to teach us compassion, to, to teach us accountability, that, that what we need is an ultimate heavenly politician come to earth, someone who knows the whole story of the, of the divine standards and to teach us and to transform us, to draw us into uh, ultimate truth and, and to forgive us. This, this perspective of Socrates um, is, is so powerful. And the Meno, especially, if you're familiar at all with uh, the uh, dialogues written by uh, Plato, but recording ideas of Socrates, maybe with some ideas of Plato mixed in, as scholars try to speculate. But nevertheless, an ancient prophecy that uh, early Christians recognized was fulfilled also in Jesus. But the idea of, of our father, the idea of origins, the, you know, it's ancestry.com emphasizes that. But in science, you know, where did it all start? And, and you know, the best we can do in science is the Big Bang Theory, uh, which I just think is exciting. As a, as a student in high school, I first was exposed to the Big Bang Theory and um, the Big Kaboom Theory. You go back far enough, uh, that's the best they can come up with, that there was this big explosion and everything has been derived from that. The, the key scientific um, constants were determined within a tiny fraction of this uh, great explosion and, and everything else. But we can't go before that. We can't ask in science, you know, who lit the fuse? What caused the explosion? Even though anytime we hear about an explosion, um, we, our first question is, you know, how did that happen? You know, well, who, did someone uh, uh, cause a, uh, uh, a bomb to go off? Or what, what's, uh, what's really going on? We assume that explosions are caused by some intelligent creature. And yet in science, it starts with an explosion. And they say, you can't ask who lit the fuse? Who was there first? But the Bible starts with the answer to that question anyway. And it's not claiming to be science. Science is a very narrow way of thinking. It is about uh, introducing God, 
introducing our Father in heaven. Now notice in this uh, Bible text in Ephesians 3, beginning in verse 14, you have a focus on the Father in verses 14 and 15. Then in verse uh, 16, it says, I, I pray that the glorious riches that um, I pray that out of his glorious riches may flow uh, strength for you and power through his spirit. So the Holy Spirit gets in there in, to have that grow in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts. So the focus here is on the whole Trinity, as we call it. But, but God the Father above us uh, God, the Spirit within us, and God as Christ, God as the Son, uh, with us and meeting our needs, uh, still with us uh, in his amazing ability to be present with the uh, people all over earth, all over wherever we are. Now, uh, what's crucial here, notice this emphasis on the the inner being, and to for Christ to dwell in us, not just have a, a, a passing experience, but to really dwell, to make his home in us, uh, not just a quick visit. I'm, I'm a little puzzled when people put uh, a plaque on their wall that there's an unseen guest in our home, uh, but you know, Christ can't just be a guest, he's gotta be part of the family. Uh, in in our lives. So kind of rethink that. How can we make Christ really thoroughly a part of the family? Um, but this emphasis on this experience of, of the real presence of Christ around us and within us. Uh, notice in verse 16, the Spirit gives us power in our inner selves. Verse 17, at the beginning, Christ is dwelling in our hearts so that the, uh, the, the Father is expressed in terms of the Son uh, dwelling within us. And uh, verse 17 at the end of the verse, uh, that we're rooted and established in love. Again, this inner self uh, that is uh, defined, uh, needs to be defined in love. And certainly defined in fairness and justice and in other things too but in in particular this week we're looking at the love aspect and god present in us helps define us in love and then it says in 18 and 19 that that paul's prayer is that we could all grasp grasp uh you, the the dimensions the full dimensions of god's love and he includes in that depth and i believe that He's got these three dimensions, the height, the, the width, the breadth of, of God's love, and the depth. So we have the three, what we might call objective dimensions, how, how God's love is surrounding us in every way. It's three-dimensional love wherever we are. We can experience and celebrate and share and grow in God's love. Uh, but also the depth, how the God's love can saturate our whole selves uh, because we still are bodies. We are spirits and souls, but we still have bodies. And we need that depth the, in the deepest part of our presence on earth. Not bodies in the narrow sense studied in biology, but including that, but, but all that we do, our whole life presence, uh, that in the full depth, uh, the, the Spirit's uh, presence. I'm, I'm often curious by people that want to be objective about everything, but we can't be objective unless we have a trained subjectivity. Part of science, for example, is learning how to look at things, to have a, a subjective awareness, to be able to see the objective facts more clearly. And, and I'm not sure if that's always taught, or, or even in art, to to not only have skills with our hands, but to be able to see, to have that capacity, the mental, the emotional capacity, to see uh, meaning, to see significance. 
You can't be a detective unless you have subjectivity. It's not just objective facts you're looking for. You need to have a, a subjective training to be able to recognize what is a clue or what's just a piece of dirt uh, in the crime scene or, or whatever. So you, I hope you think about how much our subjectivity matters so to have depth in the spirit to really have the depth of love not just the ex objective experience though we need that but to thoroughly be saturated to be filled up with the amazing love of god and to really uh, grasp the width and breadth and height you know all three dimensions and the depth within ourselves so the longing is crucial you you don't see what you don't in some sense long for you want to see and then then you start recognizing things and of course the more we long for something the more it'll just pop out someone you want to meet you can look at a crowd and you know who you're looking for that face can just jump right out at you even though there may whatever 500 or more people in a crowd you see that person that you're longing for uh looking for um, so it's just a, an amazing part of our experience long for god long for his love long for growing in the amazing meaning of the christmas story that god himself chose to become human and to be with us, to teach us, to do miracles, to die for our sins, and to rise again, to conquer death, paving the way for us to not fear death, but to instead experience even eternal life already during this life. Uh, what an amazing gift uh, Christmas is to us. So longing, but also looking, really, uh, uh, taking time to look, taking time, Jesus said at the very end, the last few words of, of Matthew, the gospel according to Matthew, he says, uh, look, I am with you every day till the end of the age. Uh, so the the meaning of, of this uh, gospel story includes to, to always be looking looking for evidence of God in your life. That that wonderful phone call, that um, amazing serendipity moment of of discovery, of joy, uh, the, the glow of Christmas as we sing the greatest songs. You know, think about how, how some of those Christmas songs can still stay in your mind the whole year. We may only sing Joy of the World at Christmas time, but what an amazing story it tells and and emphasizes this great theme of joy, the the fourth theme of Advent that we'll look at in a few days together. So take time, not only just for longing for, for Jesus, but for looking, for looking. And this text uh, encourages that as uh, Paul prays that we could really appreciate, to understand, to, to grow in the amazing greatness of God's love uh, beyond measure, beyond really knowing that you might know what's beyond knowledge. But, but we know what that experience is, to, to know something and then to realize we've only scratched the surface. We only have a, a, a tiny piece because, in fact, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know even more, so that the the whole even education, if it's done well, uh, increases humility. As as the more we know, the more we realize how much more there is to know, and not to be frustrated like 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 it's going to drive us nuts, but to realize that the learning process is infinite, is amazingly uh, always open, always providing the uh, wonderful rewards of of joy and uh, discovery and wonder at uh, the greatness of God's creation and, and especially the greatness of God's presence within us 
on the subjective side, on this beautiful, powerful, uh, significant, necessary subjective side and objective side to see uh, God's hand in our uh, daily lives. So there's the longing, the looking, and of course the loving. Longing, looking, loving. And, and when we look at the verses here, um, the loving is, is, uh, has grounding, has grasping, and has getting. All right? Grounding. Paul in verse 17 says, become rooted and grounded and established in love. Wow. You got grounding? Are you rooted? Do you have nourishment uh, coming up from from your roots, uh, from your deeper self? Um, if Christ is in you, you you feel that nourishment daily, uh, not just uh, occasionally when you open the Bible, but to really have that grounding to be established in God's love, to really have stability in God's love, to be grounded and to grasp. Now, sometimes we think of grasping as as uh, desperate and uh, you're not not satisfying. But it, but the biblical term here for grasping means to really to know, to understand, to really lay hold of, to to have something precious. Uh, these uh, f- knowledge of this four dimensions of God's love that that you know the whole width of our experience, the width of every setting, every place we are is filled with God's love. The depth, you know, going forward uh, is filled with God's love. The height, as high as we can go, not just in the highest skyscraper uh, in New York City or other places, but the, the full height in our airplanes or wherever. You can go, go start traveling to uh, Mars uh, in a few years. Well, God's presence is there, whatever the height is, and the depth, the deep self, your deep self, uh, to really, to grasp, to really get to know what is beyond knowledge, to really uh, appreciate the, these four dimensions of Christ's love, why he came, what he did, why he continues to minister in your life and mine, and then getting, you know, we've got the the grounding, the grasping, and then the getting to really get the love, uh, to really get awareness of the multifaceted uh, joy, fulfillment, uh, completeness of God's love, of Christ's love within us. So I encourage you, reread the text, Ephesians three fourteen to the end. 14 through 21, uh, amazing Bible text uh, and vows helping us learn how to, to long, long for Christ's presence. Think of the, the prophets, think of our own need for, for Christ in each of our lives and everyone's life in different ways, but longing, longing for the deepest gift of Christmas, the greatest gift of Christmas that is given to us every day of the year, uh, looking expectantly for evidences of his presence and um, and then loving to, to share the love, to receive the love and to share the love, to share the love to God, to receive fully his love for you and to overflow with love back to him and to other people and love for his amazing creation. So may God help you to really have a new experience. If you don't know God, to really pray and seek. Talk to me, talk to others that know God. And and, and now, now this amazing Christmas to, to receive the greatest gift, the fullness of God within as we receive the love that we long for and that we look for. Amen. God bless you.